Here it is, the day you've all been waiting for, rules of differentiation. As much fun as it was to find limits use, or pardon me, derivatives using limits, we're not going to do that anymore. <laughs> it's just not practical to do that much work to find a derivative. So we have these sweet little rules of differentiation. So let's write them out. Here's our first one is the constant rule. So a constant is just a number. So if I'm going to take the derivative of C, all right, C is any real number. So any just number by itself with no variables, because remember this notation, this dy dx typically, this means the derivative with respect to x. Well, we don't have one. The derivative of a constant is always zero. And we're gonna define this C belongs to the real numbers. So C is my variable. This uh, epsilon is what it is. It's the Greek letter epsilon means belongs to, belongs to, and then you know this means real numbers, right? So C belongs to the real numbers if I know that any time you try to take a derivative of just a number by itself, automatic zero, all right? Okay, here's the next one, power rule. The power rule, if I take the derivative with respect to x of x to the n, you're going to bring the exponent in front and subtract one from it. That's the power rule. So anytime you have the variable to a number, right, a numeric exponent, then you're going to bring that number in front and then subtract one from it. That's the power rule. Pretty cool, right? Let's keep on keeping on. A constant multiple rule. So if I want to take the derivative with respect of C in front of whatever function it is that I have. So there's just a number in front. It's that coefficient, that number in front. The coefficient stays, and then you just take the derivative of that function. All right, and you know we're going to do examples on all this stuff, but here's just the basics so that you can refer back to it whenever you have these rules. Okay, the sum slash difference rule. I want to take the derivative with respect to x of some function plus or minus, it doesn't matter, another function. That is just the derivative of the first one, plus or minus, whatever you've got, the derivative of the second one. So when you have the sum or difference, you're just going to look at each one of those terms and take the derivative of each one of those terms, and you're still going to add and subtract it. All right, so there's our basics. The constant, the derivative of a constant is always zero. The power rule, which you're going to use, and it's going to just be like breathing to you, you use it so much. Bring it in front, subtract one from the exponent. The constant is a constant multiple, just stays in front. And sum or difference, we're just going to take the derivative of each term and then add or subtract those. Okay, look at this. Here is example 1a. We're going to find the derivative, of course. Now, I want to take the derivative of x to the ninth. So I'm going to squeeze this in a little bit here. This is my power rule. So I'm going to take the exponent, bring it in front, and subtract 1 from it. So my derivative, bringing the exponent in front, subtracting 1 from it. That's it. <laughs> oh, it's amazing, right? That is totally amazing. And that's it. Now you have these rules because we did all the limit stuff. That's how these rules are derived. But look at this here just for a second. What if I were going to do this one? This would have been the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h to the ninth power. I mean, we've got Pascal's triangle, but come on, folks. We're not doing something like that when you can just go right to 9x to the 8th. We're not doing this anymore. All right. Okay. Let's do more. This is so exciting. Okay. 
we have this one. Oops, let me squeeze this in a little bit here. Example 1b again, we're still going to find the derivative. And we have f of x is equal to x. Just x by itself. All right? So if I just have x, that's the same thing as having an exponent of 1, right? All right, so I'm going to bring this 1 in front and subtract 1 from it. So f prime of x is now going to be 1 times x to the 0. What happens when you have anything to the 0 power? That's just a 1, right? So f prime of x is just 1 because we know this is equal to 1. So 1 times 1 is just 1. All right? So here is what we know. When you just have an x, that's quotes, when you just have an x, then you just write the quote coefficient. Because we know if it's just x by itself, the coefficient, which is that constant multiple rule, right? The coefficient is just going to be that 0. Okay. Okay, okay. I mean, the exponent is just going to be a 0, so my coefficient is just going to be that number, whatever that is. All right, let's do one more here out of example 1. And this is just setting our stage up here. Man, this is so nice, isn't it? Oh, it's exciting. What if I want to take the derivative of 2 to the 8th? What do you get? Now, it's 2 to the 8th. 2 is my base. This says the derivative with respect to x. Do you have any x's in here? No! That's just a constant. It doesn't matter what that constant is. It could be the biggest constant in the world, and it doesn't matter. That's cool, right? Good. Oh, man, you guys, your life just became revolutionized with all of this. Yeah, okay. Let's do example two here, and then I'll break off this part so you don't have such a big video. Example 2a, I want to take the derivative with respect to x of negative 7 x to the 11 over 8. Now, 98% of success in mathematics is what? Organization. I hope you're saying that. Say it out loud and learn it, love it. So anytime you have numbers like this, I'm going to bring those numbers in front just so that it's easier to look at. Then now that negative 7 eighths is just a coefficient, right? So if that's just going to be a coefficient for me, I'm now going to have the constant multiple rule so it stays in front, bringing my exponent in front so I can subtract one from it. So negative 7 eighths times 11, and then x to the 10 because you subtract 1. So my final answer is a negative 77 eighths x, x to the 10th. Got a little tongue tied there. All right, not bad. Let's do 2b. I'll change my color so that it's obvious that they're two separate ones. I want to take the derivative with respect to t. All variables are valid. Make sure you're working on using your variables. And I have 3 eighths t, or pardon me, square root of t. What's another way to write the square root? I don't have a square root rule, but I do have a power rule, right? 98% of success in mathematics, organization. So this is really 3 eighths t to the 1 half power. Now I can work that. 3 eighths times, bring that 1 half in front, and then I'm going to come up here and sub. When you subtract 1 from a fraction, you get a common denominator, right? So 1 half minus 2 over 2 is a negative 1 half. I'm down for you writing 3 sixteenths t to the negative 1 half. I'm 100% on board with that. Or you could write 3 over 16 square roots of t if you wanted to put that in the denominator. 
I don't care. I don't think my math lab cares, but I typically prefer just leaving this up here because now I can take a second derivative, right? Because I already have it as a power rule. I don't have to do any extra work. It just makes it easier. Cool. See, we're going to practice more of this, but how wonderful is this, you guys? It's so good.